Hi, I am Chaminda Jayawadhan, Senior Software Engineer at WSO2. I am going to give you an introduction on WSO2 USB tooling. We are going to talk about WSO2 USB tooling and some of its important features. Further, I will be demonstrating how you can use those features when integrating with the USB server. It's included implementation designed for ESB artifacts and deployed over the ESB server using the provided features in the WSO2 ESB tooling module. The WSO2 ESB tooling component is a replacement for WSO2 Developer Studio and it provides capabilities of an Eclipse-based development environment for WSO2 ESB. You can develop, debug and deploy your services features and artifacts and also manage their dependencies through a simplified graphical editor via WSO2 ESP tooling. ESP tooling ensures reusability, maintainability and extensibility of ESP artifacts. Further, ESP tooling has been empowered with visual data mapping and mediation debugger features that are discussed in two separate screencasts. You have to download ESP tooling 5.0 and ESP server 5.0 from the ESP product page shown here. If you are going to install ESP tooling using Peter repo, you need Eclipse Mask 2 distribution downloaded and installed. Now let's see how we can install ESB tooling using online P2 repository. I have already installed Eclipse Mask 2 distribution. Go to help, select install new software and click on add. Give here the repository URL. This is the online P2 repository URL and give the name. I'm giving ESB tooling and click on OK. I'm selecting all the components here and click on next click on next and how to accept the license agreement and click on finish now it's installing the usb tooling features i'm accepting the warning and select the modules and click on ok and restart eclipse now you will see a new menu appeared here in the menu bar as developer studio you can click on it and select open dashboard if you need further information on the installation, please refer below URL. Now it's time to create artifacts. If you go to the Developer Studio dashboard, you can see all the available options to create ESP artifacts. First, I'm going to show you the steps to create an API, then the steps to create a registry resource. First, I'll select ESP config project. Then click on next and give the project name here. Click on next. Keep the default as it is and click on finish. Now you can see there's a project we created and I right click on API new rest API. Click on next. Give the API name here and context. This is our project and click on finish. Now we created the API. If we have a look in the source view, we can see configuration for the API are displayed here. We are going back to design. If I open the mediators tab, you can see all available mediators are listing here. First, I will add the send mediator to the created API. Then I will add an endpoint to the send mediator. This is my endpoint. If we go to the property section, we can see relevant properties are there. So I'm giving a URL of existing REST API and that's all with the endpoint. Now, if you select on the resource, you can see relevant properties below. By default, the get method is in true state. I will keep it as it is. And I'm adding a log mediator before the send mediator here in the in sequence and changing the log level to full. And also I put another send mediator to the out sequence and also another log mediator in the out sequence. I'm changing the log level to full. Okay, now I'm done with the API configuration. I'm saving this. Now, if you go to the source view of the created API, you can see the API configuration is here. You can see the resource in sequence and out sequence are there. Now, I'm creating a composite application project which used to package ESP artifact and also to deploy those as a single file. This enhances reusability and maintainability of ESB artifacts. Go back to the dashboard, select composite application project. We called it car. So I'm selecting this and give some name. And you can see on the dependencies, the ESP solution project we created appeared here. And I'm selecting the project here. Click on next and keep the default configuration 
and click on finish. So we created a composite application project also here. We included the created ESB solution project to that composite application project. As we can create registry resources via ESB tooling, I'm going to show you how we can do that. In the dashboard, you can see registry resource here, but prior to that, we have to create registry resource project. I'm selecting registry resources project, give the name for the project, click on next, click on finish. Here is our registry resources project. Now I can create registry resources. I'm selecting registry resource, click on next, give the resource name. Here I'm going to create endpoint, so I'm giving a suitable name for that. And from the template tab, you have to select the type of the template. I'm selecting GTP endpoint. And also you can select the registry type conf or governance. I'm selecting governance here and the registry path. I'm giving the endpoint. And you can see the registry resources project name is appeared here. So we are creating our registry resource inside this project and click on finish. If we go inside the registry resources project, we can see the created artifact is appeared here. We can see the registry path we gave here and this is the endpoint we created. Now I'm going back to the composite application project I created and you can see there's a new project. This is the one we created as the registry resources project. And I'm going to include the registry resources project to the composite application project. Simply, I have to click on this checkbox. And one important thing here, you can see the default server role of the registry resource is governance registry. I have to change this to enterprise service bus and save. Okay, now we created an API as ESB artifact and also we created an another endpoint as a registry resource and also we created a composite application including the both. So now we have to deploy this artifact to an ESB server. Now let's see how you can enable connectivity to a running ESB server from ESB tooling. For that we have to use WSO2 remote server. Go to the server section and click on the link from the pop-up. You have to select WSO2 and you have to select WS2 remote server and here the host name where your ESB server is running and click on next. We have to give the server URL. This is my server URL. There's a already up and running ESB server. Here we can test the connectivity server exists. Then we have to give the username and password of the admin user of the ESB server. We can validate credentials are okay and click on next. Here we have option to select existing composite applications from the remote server creation wizard and I'm selecting created composite application. Click on add and click on finish. If you click on the server created we can see it's getting started. Now it's started and we can see the composite application we created under the remote server. And also there's another alternative way to define a new server other than connecting to an existing ESB server. I will explain the steps to do that. Right click on the server section and click on server. Again, you have to select WSO2 and also you can select WSO2 USB server file. Click on next. You have to select correct JRE that you are using. For the carbon home, you can browse and select existing ESB server distribution from there and click on OK and click on next. You can define ports here. I'm using default ports and click on next. Here also you can select car file you created. Click on add and click on finish. Now in the console tab, you can see the server is getting started. So it has been started now. And if you see in the below, you can see the composite application which we created during the server creation process has been deployed in the server and once you right click on the server you can see stop restart options and also some several other options as well you have already seen how we deployed the esp artifacts that we created using esp tooling and if we create a new artifact you will be able to add it to the existing c app or else create a new c app and deploy directly to the esp server if we log into the management console here there is the c app called compass add application we created from ESP tooling and under the API section, we can see the API we created from the ESP tooling. We can invoke the API using endpoint. And also we created a registry resource, which is an endpoint. If we browse the registry, we can see the endpoint we created under the governance registry. Now we will see on another useful feature of ESP tooling. It is the ESP solution project that enables 
a user to add multiple project types at once. As an example, let's say you need to add ESB config project and registry resource project and also compass add application project as per the requirement. In this case, you use ESB solution project to add all these together. Let's go to the tooling back. From the dashboard, select the ESB solution project, give the name. So I have given and changed the name, default name. And you can see there are three types of projects here. Uh, registry resources project and uh, connect exporter project and composite application project. For the moment, we need uh, only the composite application and registry resources project. I'm deselecting this and click on next, click on finish. So you can see, as you can see, there are three newly created projects here in the Dev Studio. So this is the ESP config project. We can create artifacts here. And also this is the this is a composite application project and also this is, this is the registry resources project. So as we previously did, you can go ahead with these three as well. So this is quite interesting since we can create all together. So we created ESP artifacts from ESP tooling and we connected to the ESP server from the ESP tooling using uh, using WSO2 remote server and we deployed artifacts to the ESB server from ESB tooling. Okay, I hope this was helpful and gave you some useful tips on using WSO2 ESB tooling. Thank you.